lovely. The sun's just coming out for us. I think this is the first proper spring day we've had, and we're on the 19th of April. So that sun is welcomed. Lovely bit of weather today. Birds are singing. The river's climbing up. Salmon are running. And today we're after the Atlantic salmon. Using a floating line today with a sinking tippet, 10 foot leg core, get down lower, get the fly down. The fly I'm using is a two inch copper and that's a woolly gun fly. One of my favorites. Had a pike here yesterday, thought it was a salmon, but I'm hoping today we might get lucky. We might get lucky. Conditions are good. The river's running nicely. Enough flow on it to work the fly, but not too much flow that we can't get down. Just got a bar now. Let's uh, decided to show himself. Isn't he lovely? Oh, he's beautiful. He's feeding in this area. I'm just going to try and get some close up images if I can. There we go, there he goes. Isn't he just lovely? Oh, he's beautiful. That's a lovely, lovely bird. Oh, how blessed we are. Lovely. Very nice. Cut against the bank. Just mend the line and then let it just sink through the creases and work the creases. We've got a couple of weirs. Look, these look, look at look, these look just gliding down beautifully. Look at that. Where's he gonna land? Oh a lovely glide that was. He's back up again. That's lovely. It's glorious. All the bird life around. Easy to cast. So we're going to go one and two. That's just perfect. Yeah, we've got um, two weirs here at Ibsley. You've got the main weir up there where the flow comes through here. You've got the second weir up there, which is the second flow. And the join where the two rivers meet is where the salmon lie up. But they could lie anywhere through here. So we work our way slowly through the pool. Listen to that 30 pound Atlantic salmon today. No tall order. But certainly 20 pound is running through. So we think there's a chance of 40. There. Well, I found the skeleton, the head, of a roe deer buck. Looking at that, you can see that's his antlers on the top. That's the antlers there. See how sharp they are. And that's the skull. And that's the neck bones. So you can put the neck jointed up there. And there you have it. It's uh, quite unusual. Either died of old age or a predator hit it. I'm trying to think what, what it could be. Wow, yeah, amazing. Without the wind against you, it's so much better. Yesterday I was fishing with really wind into my face and you could hardly control the fly. But uh, today, ultimate control. Now, the, the advantage of the floating line, you can see, is that um, you can control the direction of where you want to present your fly and which creases or seams of river whereas with a sinking line it's much harder so I've got a sinking tippet which I make up myself using leg core and uh, this one's about 10 feet it can go up to 15 I've got a 15 foot two-handed rod which means in theory you could take a 15 foot leader no problem but the uh, advantage of a two-handed rod is casting and playing in the fish and also controlling the 
the fly, so I can point, the, point it out 15 feet and control the seam, or I can tuck in close to the bank, and I can also control where the fly seam works. And the thing is, you only have to tweak it a little bit, give the fly a chance to get down with the current, and then just tweak it. So it's a little tweaking. So the salmon lying up behind, a little tweak could be just enough to, to accelerate it into action. See, we've got warmer temperature now, so the water's still cold. I can feel it coming through my hands. And the uh, air temperature is about 10 degrees warmer. So with that kind of differential, you'd think that salmon will start to come off the bottom of the river, and they may just come up on the rise and take it literally a foot or two below the surface. And this is what we're after. I had a follow a couple of days ago on a, um, a woolly gun and uh, he was following it on the surface. So uh, there's always that chance as well. That's lovely. Everything seems to be working well. Conditions look good. Let that swing around with the flow. That's fine. Little tweak. And then just a step to about three or four feet step. And then we methodically work the river bank at angles. Now, let's go out a bit further. Far bank jobby. Just mend the line. See what I'm doing there. As I cast, I'm straightening up the line so it goes with the flow. That means that the fly is being properly presented because instead of it curving with the river, it's um, going through at a 45 degree angle. So there will be a little bit of a curve on it. Often the salmon will take it on the curve, but that looks fine. That's beautiful. We're getting into a shallow bar now, so I'll be tweaking it more often to keep the fly above the shallow bar. Salmon lie up behind the shallow bar where the two points meet on that peninsula. So I'll be casting to that peninsula. I'm hoping to see a bit of fish there. Always keep your eyes peeled in case the salmon heads and tails or surfaces or comes up and you can work that bit of water. A couple of years ago I got a big female hen fish. She came up and showed herself. She spoiled the water. There was a great big, like a whirlpool. And I thought, yep, that's a salmon. Really aggressive. She was definitely up for it. And I presented my black and white, uh, black and yellow fly to her. And within two seconds of that hitting the water, she hit it and I was in. And it was beautiful fishing. So I love to spot fish. If I can spot fish and work an area, knowing there's a fish lying up, I very much prefer that. The water clarity is improving, which means you'll be able to spot more fish. And you can see them with polarized glasses. Polarized glasses are very important. Fish just rose just there. I thought I saw a fish rise. That's lovely. So I've disturbed the fish. Could be a salmon. It certainly hasn't been raised. So we come back to this spot here, and we're going to present the fly right on it, right on it. So it's just on that far bank. It looked like it was silver, so I think it could be a salmon. I mean, another fish rise as well. Trout, sea trout. Now what I've done there is I've just put the fly right on its nose and just let that work work it through. I want to be tight against that bang. That's where I saw the rise. So we go again. One and two and three. Right on it. Picked up some weed. That's unfortunate. Too tight.
Wink. We're into fish. Yeah. Ah, oh, it came off. Ah. Oh. I think it was a trout. <laughs> that was a trout. That was a shame. It certainly wasn't a salmon. That was lovely. I just worked that rifle. Did you see that? Just kind of went in like that. And I got the I got the line just to go down on that rifle and then just worked it. I'm trying that again. It's just technique. There was definitely a two pound trout on there. Two, three pound sea trout. That was unlucky. Didn't quite get a decent enough hook on it. But it took the fly. It's good. And that trout was just tucked in on that eddy. I'm just going to drop that back again. Try it again. Right, this, this is the start of the Broadmead pool. So just feeding through dog kennel. Broadmead takes us all the way around the bend here. Work through the dog kennel. That was a nice little glide. And then work through Gypsy Hole. So lots of pools to work. There's an unlimited number of pools. And we we'll just keep working our way through. Our bank, if we can. Push on, and this is a biggie. Big, big fish. This could be, it is a trout. Yep, push on. Right, I'm just going to try and bring him onto this side if I can. Some flat water. We'll just keep going, get him onto the main line. Alright, let's play him in. Still on. That's a nice fish. Alright. Bring him in. Cool, he took that right on the fast water. He's swimming fast towards us. I think it's a trout. It looks like a trout. Could be a sea trout. Might be taking a bit of line. It's certainly not a salmon, but it's a nice trout. into the black water. There he is. That's a beautiful trout. Yeah, that's a beauty. That's a beauty. Oh, I'm starting to fight. It's a trout. I think it is a sea trout. Oh, that's a beauty. It's going low. No. Oh, he's just woken up. God, he's turbocharged. Feel him in the pool, just fighting. Right. Let's see if we can knock him. Oh, he's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That took a woolly gum fly. He's a beauty. He's a beauty. Right, let's see if we can net him. It's a lovely little fish. Here he comes. Sea trout. Let's have a look at him. Oh yes, it's a very, very pretty sea trout. Now, what I do is wet my hands so we don't touch, touch the fish at all. Forceps. That's the way we cook them. Right on the edge of the lip there. I think we can get him out with the forceps. There he comes. Look at that 
on there. Slightly hit there. Get him out. One more. There's the hook, and there's the fish. There's a sea trout. That pound left in the tub in there, put it back in the water. Let him recover. There's the sea trout. There we go. There's Kevin. It's a beauty. Tell. Like so. Facing upstream. Up he goes. And there we go.